All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna talk about gumi. And gumi has become one of my favorite fruits. It's a red berry that uh, was named after gummy bears. That's how it got its name because it, it does, in fact, I couldn't believe it. I didn't wanna believe it, but it does, in fact, taste like gummy bears or a gummy candy. Um, they're not shaped like bears. They're a red berry that's uh, rather small and they have a pretty decently sized pit. However, this variety right here that we're looking at is a variety called Carmen. And my Carmen Gumi, I believe it's Carmen or I think it's Carmine actually. Carmine. The Carmine variety has been, I guess, selected um, I don't know where they get these things, how they select them, how this all works exactly. But I'll tell you that this one is four times the size. The berry is four times the size of other gumi. So it's a very large berry. Um, the flesh to pit ratio is a lot better because of its size. And in, in my estimation, uh, they're actually quite tasty and therefore bringing that whole thing together, I, I would argue that they're uh, one of my favorite fruits now. I think it may even be in my top five, uh, which is really saying something, because in here in this yard, we grow everything. Uh, we grow figs, persimmons, pawpaw, jujubes, gooseberries, uh, honeyberries, currants, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, peaches, plums, apricots, apples, um, grapes, different types of grapes, different colored raspberries. I mean, you name it, we grow it here. Um, pears, different types of pears. So I, you know, for me to be saying this is pretty, pretty extraordinary. Now, what I've noticed because it is in full bloom today, which is quite a nice sight. It is a beautiful plant. Um, the honeybees and the bumblebees have been all over this thing. What I want to show you guys is that the, the fruiting and the flowering habit of this is quite obvious. It's kind of like a mulberry, and that a mulberry will fruit on the last year's growth, the new shoots on last year's growth. Um, and it has to be, I guess, two years old, but I'm even seeing wood here that's not two years old. But it comes from a base from the bottom here that is multiple years old. Now, if I zoom in with the camera, you can get a decent view of the different colors, I guess, of some of these trunks. And you can tell that the younger shoots are more red, more maroon in color, they're more vigorous, more clean looking, whereas the older shoots are gray. You can see this gray color here. So anywhere where there's a red one, those are the new shoots that came up from the base last year, and as a result, they actually are not really fruiting all that much. I think they put out such vigorous growth. They're almost like a water shoot and therefore they're behaving in a manner that's not very productive. However, I do have a water shoot that came up, branched out here in three different directions and one of them, believe it or not, is actually fruiting. Um, or a couple of these branches, two of the three branches are fruiting. So what I think this means to me at least is that we really ought to, in, to increase production is uh, kind of probably slow down the vigor. If we do get the water shoots, that's okay. We probably want to limit the number of water shoots here, right? I would, I would imagine, you know, this thing has about almost 10 shoots coming from a low point here on the bush. You may want to limit that number and then we want to really control the size of it and even tip it throughout the season, do some summer pruning, prune out some of the water shoots. Um, I've done a pretty decent job pruning this thing, not really understanding how this plant really works. You know, there's not a whole lot of information out there, guys, on this thing. And we kind of just had to see how this all works, but I'm, I'm shocked how insanely productive it is. So on just about every single new shoot that's coming out, um, by the way, it's leafing out everywhere. It's not just, you know, up high. There's very little apical dominance. 
in that, uh, or there's less apical dominance. I would say on every single shoot here, I'm counting about four or five, or three to five flowers per new shoot. So I'm thinking just on this bush alone, that's about three years old now. It's in its third season, I think. This is either its third or fourth season. I think it's, I think this is its third season. Um, that it's insanely productive. I mean, there's probably a thousand flowers on this one bush, um, which is really incredible. And I've really pruned it. I pruned this thing way back. We even propagated some. Um, I took off the water shoots, by the way, those very vigorous and healthy water shoots. I made some, I topped it at different heights and then stuck them in the ground at different locations of the yard to see if they'll, if they'll root. So we'll find out if that's gonna work out. But point is, is that this is uh, really quite a tasty fruit, not talked about enough. And it's obviously quite productive. I don't know how much pounds this would be because the fruits are quite small. But you know, I imagine from one blueberry bush as an example, I could be I'd probably compare this to a blueberry in the size um, and the amount of fruit. This is probably going to get the same amount as a blueberry would. You know, I got probably half the amount of flowers on my blueberries, so probably around 500. And the fruits probably weigh something similar, uh, and they're of a similar size. So I would say, uh, even though this is probably a similar age or even a year younger than my blueberry bushes, they are outproducing my blueberries. And my blueberries are quite healthy. Um, and they have a lot of flowers on them this year. So, you know, worth talking about, I think. We're, we're gonna keep you guys updated. You know, it's flowering right now. Assuming no frost, um, we will get fruit probably 30 to 45 days from today. Uh, which means that this is a very early crop, an early fruiter. This is one of the earliest things in the yard, besides the strawberries, the honeyberries. Um, this is one of the earliest fruits. So thank you guys here for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, um, give us a thumbs up and check out our other videos because we don't just grow, as I mentioned, the gumi. We grow all kinds of different fruits and uh, I'm gonna try to keep you guys updated on that. Maybe a little bit less on the figs, more on the other fruits this year. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care, guys, and uh, stay safe out there.